first. Ray, we're <coughs> ready to begin with Mississippi State. Uh, we're going to go straight to questions with the two student athletes. And if you'll raise your hand, we'll get one of the uh, remote mics to you. Uh, when you raise your hand, when you ask your question, if you would identify yourself in the outlet that you represent. So we'll go ahead with the questions. Let's start right here on the front row. <laughs> Uh, Robbie Falk with Starkville Daily News. DJ, obviously you guys had a tough task defensively today, but came out and, and had a really good showing in the first half. Mm -hmm. How well did you feel like you guys executed for uh, 40 minutes in this game against a really good offense? I felt like we did a great job for 40 minutes. You know, we stayed together in front of, from the start. Like, we just dictated. You know, we just um, – we didn't allow them to get into their stuff, you know, and they was just fighting from behind the whole time. So we just did a good job for 40 minutes just staying on tech. Let's stay on the front row on the aisle right here. Stefan Kreischnick with the Clarion Ledger. Cam, you guys talked on Wednesday about uh, not just wanting to win that game against LSU to, to secure a tournament spot, but you know, also wanted to play beyond that. I guess what was kind of the, the message last night going into today about wanting to, to beat Tennessee and, and keep this run going? Uh, just going out playing like that could be our last game. Uh, having a, a good layout of the bracket, uh, most of the teams on our side, we kind of already played good or already beat. So just knowing we got the confidence to go out there and compete with all the teams. OK, let's take one more right here on the front row, and then we'll come over to you guys. Cam, uh, what do you think for, for someone who you know, is more of a co uh, casual college basketball fan, what do you think you and your guys kind of showed everyone about Mississippi State basketball today that probably didn't watch you guys more so this year? Uh, that we get after it, and uh, please, please keep counting us out. Uh, please give us, keep giving us a uh, chip on our shoulder. Uh, it gives fuel to the fire. So just keep doing that. All right, let's go to questions on the front row on the right side. This one's for Cam and DJ Mitch Davis, the Mitch Davis Show. Guys, talk about what it meant to you to hear those Mississippi State fans at the end hooting and hollering, having a good time, and silencing Rocky Top today in Nashville. Cam. Yeah, it just means a lot uh, having a good crowd like that because I don't know if the people that couldn't see, it was, it was mostly orange out there. So yeah, it just felt good uh, just silencing all that noise and just having our fans root for us. No, same for DJ. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, my answer too. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just piggyback what he said, you know, it just felt good because it was mostly orange, you know, like we was in a. Um, this is their home, I guess. You know, this is a, it was a home game for them. So, you know, just go out there and get a win and see our home fans be happy. And we want to do it for them. So we just trying to go get a championship. OK, question. You good? OK, was there a question in the center? Let's come back to the front row right here. DJ, for, you know, the veterans on this team, um, you know, you guys had this feeling last year you beat Florida and then, you know, got bounced in the the next round, I guess, just well, what's it mean to get to play here another day? And, and what was the mood in the locker room like? I mean, we was, it's a big relief, you know, for two years since I've been here, you know, we always get put out in the, the this round. Four for me. Well, two for me, three, I don't know how long it's been for me, but you know, it's just a big relief on my back, you know, just to get to the final four. I've never been in the SEC on um, final four, so you know, it's a big relief. And this is my last go around, so you know, I'm going out there and giving my all, whatever it takes. Next question on the far right. Drew Hill, Daily Memphian, DJ, I mean, you've been teammates with Cam for a long time. How often have you thought about, you know, uh, that this could be, you know, you're getting towards the end of, of a run with a, a guy you've been with you know, for that long? I mean, I try not to think about it too much, but, you know, some days I think about it. You know, I've been with him for a long time. You know, this is my guy. He's like my best friend, you know, and uh, I don't know what he's going to do without me next year, but, you know, I'll call to check up on him. Was there a question? One of you guys. All right, let's go to the center aisle right here. <coughs> Cam, that uh, dunk you had in the first half went viral pretty quickly, and uh, the camera panned to your mom, who was uh, she was celebrating quite a bit there. Uh, what, what's it been like uh, having her, you know, sit right behind the bench, you know, throughout your career, but you know, this tournament as well? Uh, just same old, same old. Uh, she's very supportive, even since I was a baby playing football, t-ball. She's been the same person my whole life. Uh, I feel like it would be kind of weird if she wasn't right there yelling and screaming. So I just, I really appreciate it. I love her, but uh, don't don't show her this, though. So you know. <laughs> we, we got time for one more. Let's take it right here on the front row. Guys, uh, Mitch Davis again with the Mitch Davis Show. Guys, talk about the performance out there for both y'all. Y'all unlocked the beast out there, and it was pretty fun to watch. DJ. 
you said um, talk about the performance. I mean, I just did, you know, I just did my job. You know, I just went out there and played defense and played hard, you know, just do what I need to do. Whatever they need me to do, I'm going to do it. So I'm going to go out there and give them all each and every night. Cam? Uh, just uh, trying to pick back, uh, pick back, play better than I would play yesterday. I kind of beat myself up yesterday. I didn't have my best performance, and my teammates and my coaches, they just told me just stay with it, and we, we trust you. We got belief in you that you're a good player. and Just go out there and do what you do. He will excuse the student athletes. You can return to the locker room. Right, Thank y'all. He'll All sleep. Right, <laughs> we'll continue on with uh, questions for Coach Jans. Let's start right on the front row. Chris, you guys have had a ton of uh, you know very impressive wins this year, but to beat the number one seed in the SEC the way that you did, I mean, was this the most impressive win of the year for your guys? You think? You know, I'm not in the mood or. Uh, portion of the season where we're reminiscing that much, but certainly it was a, a big win for us considering uh, the platform, considering, you know, it's the end of the year, considering, you know, what we're trying to play for. And we've got so much respect for, for Coach Barnes, uh, his staff and their players. I mean, to win the SEC regular season title is big time to go through the gauntlet, gauntlet of this type of league and be able to come out on top just says so much about their program and they do it the right way and really felt our only chance, you know, was to hit them in the mouth. You know, we had to come out and, and attack them and, you know, just get our toughness in the game and, and see if we could rattle them a little bit. And so our plan was, was super aggressive and everything we were doing defensively and even offensively for that matter. And, you know, you've been doing this long enough that sometimes when you got a game on that court, and you know you've got, you know a run. You've got a win. You feel really good. They haven't played in a while, and you know that sometimes you get a little rust on your game uh, that way as well. And I thought that had something to do with, you know, how the game unfolded at least from the start. No question on the uh, on the outside aisle. Go ahead, Chris. I, I think y'all are the only team in the league that hadn't lost to Tennessee this season, and, and both both games y'all played against them you had more success than a lot of people do in the paint in those matchups. Was there something about that matchup you felt good about going into this, or is that just your guys having two good days? Well, it doesn't happen very often, but we actually felt going into the first game, like you mentioned, and even um, this afternoon with a similar mindset that we wanted to really attack inside out and, and try to go at Adu and the other bigs as much as we could. And he's an unbelievable player, um, especially on the offensive end. And he's a really good shot blacker as well. But we felt like we had a little bit, you know, at times a weight advantage. And we wanted to try to, you know, get our back down game and get Jimmy and Tolu, you know, going and maybe, you know, get to the free throw line, you know, while you're trying to pound the ball um, inside. And then on the perimeter, um, obviously, it starts with Connect and, and Ziegler out there. And, you know, with Connect, you just you do the best you can. You try to make him a volume scorer, you know, make everything hard for him. Um, and with, with Ziegler, you know, again, you just got to do your best. I mean, they're, they're obviously both really good players. But um, we felt good about the matchup, and that's helped us. You know, we beat them. So, you know, we, we got confidence going into this game, and um, our kids felt good um, about the matchup all day long. There's a question on the second row on the right side. Justin from 247 Sports. Uh, Chris, Cam mentioned Noah having a chip on her shoulder and, and sort of feeling the fire. Why do you feel like you, your staff, and, and these players sort of embrace that underdog mindset and been able to uh, you know, use it to win many of these top 10 uh, games? I don't know. A um, lot of different reasons, probably. But, um, you know, these kids uh, are tough minded guys. And, you know, <laughs> We feel like we work pretty hard on a daily basis, and they bought into that bring it every day lunch pail mentality. And you know, some of them, for the most part, you know, weren't recruited at the highest level, didn't have a bunch of stars by their names. You know, we got a couple that did, but the majority of our guys, you know, didn't grow up in basketball that way. And you know, we we mixed this group together, and um, unfortunately, they they you know got to know each other and like each other, and you can tell by the way they play. Um, for each other, but um, definitely, you know, at times, you know, we talk about, you know, that chip and trying to use it to our advantage in certain situations. Okay, front row right here on the center. Coach, he asked about uh, Cam's mom, and I know you got Tolu's family back there and, and Josh's family too. What's that dynamic like with, with those families behind the bench and 
they're so involved in the crowd too. I mean, what, what's your thoughts on their involvement with their kids and uh, with the team as well? You know, it's been really fun to uh, be here, you know, for the last two years and getting to know these guys. You know, when you walk in and, you know, you're talking about a bunch of guys that have been with us for two years and certainly some additions, but they didn't know me, I didn't know them. And um, there was some blind faith on their part um, to stay with us. They didn't have choices not to. Uh, even after the first year, they had choices not to. And um, getting to know their families and how supportive they are. You know, that, that's what impressed me the most um, after our first year, during our first year, is the quality of young people that I inherited. Um, and then certainly what we've added to the group. It just makes it more fun every day to, to know you're going to work and going to practice and they're going to have, you know, a good mindset for the most part individually and collectively. But in terms of the dynamic, um, you know, during those games, it's, it's different. Um, you know, I don't have rabbit ears, fortunately. My wife will ask me a lot, you know, throughout our career of, of you know, did you hear what they said? And I'm like, no. She goes, I don't know how you don't. I go, I don't know either, but I'm glad that I don't. So I'm sure there was stuff said um, that, that I didn't hear, but don't get me wrong, you know, I can't lie to you and that I don't hear them um, once in a while. And I guess as long as we keep winning, you know, being, them being behind there is no issue. Okay, question on the front row in the center. Coach, it's another night where um, you know Cam and DJ have the really impressive plus-minus numbers. Um, you know, for them, when you guys have games like this, like yesterday against LSU and today against Tennessee, when the defense is, is playing so well, just how key are are the two of them? I mean, they just got great basketball bodies, and and I've talked about this with the local folks, obviously, and they know how to play. You know, that's the one thing that, in my opinion, is the hardest thing to teach is just instincts. They either have it or they don't. You can get a little bit better at it. And just an understanding of what's going on out there all the time. And you know, those two are at the top of the list for our team. We got a bunch of other guys too, but they just get it. You know, And, and that's nice as, as a coach to have guys on the floor that, that do get it. And it, it makes a big difference. And they're about winning more than anything else. And Good. in this day and age in college basketball, Unfortunately, that isn't always what's going on. Um, but, but our guys in that locker room, especially these two, have put aside some, some interests of their own to, to sacrifice to be you know, part of something bigger than themselves. And it's fun to be a part of it. Let me take two more questions. Uh, second row on the far right. I know mean, you've been waiting. And then we'll finish up right here on the front row on the right. Yeah, I mean, a couple occasions there in that second half of the beginning, and then with five minutes left, Tennessee, you know, they made a bit of a run sort of like they did uh, in the meeting in January, but you were able to just stem the tide pretty much right away each time. So I guess just what were the keys and what were you, you know, saying to the guys in those moments to, you know, keep that comfortable lead? Well, I'm not surprised, obviously, um, with the quality of program and the players that, you know, they weren't going to go away. You know, we talked about it at halftime. Certainly talked about it in some of our huddles of trying to get out of this hovel and have the mentality that we were down 10. You know, play with that urgency. You know, they're not going anywhere. They're going to, you know, punch back. And, and they did that and definitely had some similarities to the first matchup where they slapped the press on us and we struggled a little bit. But we played well enough in the first half that the deficit, you know, was, was a little bit bigger than it was in Starkville. And that certainly uh, brought a comfort level to us when they were uh, trying to make their comebacks. Okay, front row on the right. Last question. Coach, I want to ask you about trusting your guys, obviously. I mean, you got some senior leadership. you got guys who have been with you for the last two years. Talk about your trust in those guys um, down the stretch and when Tennessee was making the run, let the veteran leadership kind of lead and lead the team to the promised land. Yeah, it's, it's been fun to uh, coach a team the last couple of years that um, have voices. You know, that some of them have grown recently. Uh, some of them have been there from the jump uh, to, to empower those guys to take ownership of the program. And like I said earlier, we've got a lot of high IQ guys that, that get it. And so you don't have to worry about them saying the wrong thing, you know, that could, you know, get you off uh, the path a little bit. And so it's, it's a big plus. And, um, you know, we obviously went through a stretch there. We weren't playing our best and we weren't having the outcomes, but like I kept telling them, you know, we're a good basketball team that are playing other good basketball teams. And it's hard to win sometimes, especially on the road or even at home, depending on you know the quality of opponent. But they all stuck together and, and, and they continue to fight and scratch and claw. And you know now now we're being uh, rewarded for it. Thank you. See Thank you, you tomorrow. You bet. You bet.